on the East Coast. Uh, where is it? Yeah, <laughs> welcome to Teachers Teaching Teachers. Chad Sansing is here with us, and Chris Sloan um, is here to have fun with us too. And uh, others may be joining us, I'm not sure. We had originally invited Jeremy Dean, and he um, there seems to be some flu going on in his house, and so he is resting this evening. We wish him well. Um, but Chad and Jeremy have been working on some letters to the next president um, kinds of things, and I, I recently went to yet another workshop that I saw in November. It was great to see it again, i got to say. Um, you know, different kinds of eyes when you're seeing it again. Um, very recently um, with Mozilla Foundation, uh, maybe you can say more specifically. Um, anyway, uh, welcome Chad. Do you want to introduce yourself and uh, say a little bit about what we might talk about here tonight? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, thanks for having me on. Uh, my name is Chad Sansing. I work as a curriculum developer for the Mozilla Foundation, uh, and I work um, specifically on web literacy materials, but also try to help out with other teaching and learning resources on different projects throughout the organization. Um, and across the organization between both the foundation side uh, and the corporation side. Uh, the foundation side is largely concerned with the mission of advancing and championing the, the open web through users' rights um, and keeping the web a you know, public resource open and accessible for all. And the corporation side is very much about the same thing and approaches it through the technologies you might have heard of, like the Firefox web browser. Um, I've been working with Jeremy. Uh, from Hypothesis, uh, as well as our own team, to develop some materials for the National Writing Project and Co's letter to the next uh, letters to the next president campaign. And so, over in the pad for tonight, there are a number of activities that we have kind of under development, just about ready to go, that have been submitted. Uh, Which is at edtechtalk.com/ttt, and I will put those up on the YouTube um, when we get it. Cool. Awesome. Ready to, but we're going to share them here tonight, too, on the screen, we hope. Sounds like a plan. <laughs> Chris, do you want to say hi? Sure. Um, well, you know, tonight, I guess, I'm a classroom teacher. You know, I teach high school, but I'm also, you know, maybe, I guess I would say a, a super lightweight uh, coder. So, like, I like the Mozilla stuff, the Thimble stuff. Um, used to use popcorn. Um, and, you know, but the Thimble stuff still lives. And Q, so, um, <laughs> Chad, Chad you, 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 you count, you, you, at the workshop you said, you said you counted how many minutes it would take before somebody mentioned popcorn. Oh, we people? are all like, you know, it's like, you just go out there in the world, we are all popcorn users. Good so job, Chris. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I just, it, it just, it's wrapped in my mind with Thimble Project. But I'm only talking thimble now. Um, and one of my other things I do is um, well, get you talking goggles too. <laughs> yeah, I have goggles. Right? Uh, so, like in the summers, I teach teachers who are getting their masters in educational technology, and so you know I try to work in uh, as best I can um, thimble projects like you know the six word memoir, um, the meme maker, stuff like that, uh, and then X-ray goggles too. So you know I'm always interested in learning more, and of course with my high school students, obviously around the hour of code, that kind of stuff. But, um, you know, I'm just always thinking of ways where we can uh, introduce some kind of coding stuff, you know, to them. Awesome. Yeah, so, so, and just to, let's uh, slow down a little bit. I mean, and, and just for somebody who's who doesn't, know these things. So there's X-ray goggles, there's Thimble and WebMaker, is that right? Are those the three tools? Yeah, those are kind of the three um, the three applications that are available right now. Uh, WebMaker is a mobile content creator, so that's, a, that's an app you can install on your Android device, take with you anywhere you go, and as you are taking photos, you're just kind of taking notes or observations about the world around you, if you want to make something funny or humorous out of whatever's going on. Uh, you can do that on the fly right there uh, on your device. Um, Thimble is a browser-based online code editor, um, and it's older iteration, 
you kind of work on one page at a time there, like one web page. Uh, now it can handle kind of multi-page projects, uh, a lot of different media, um, and as such, it's a great place both to begin learning to code for the web because there are a lot of projects that have tutorials and will kind of walk you through making incremental changes to a web page that already exists, uh, but it can also kind of spiral up with you in your learning and allow you to produce original content later on. Uh, the web x-ray goggles, and I'll, I'll put a link uh, to those in the pad as well later on, though it's just um, goggles.mozilla.org and thimble is thimble.mozilla.org. Um, Goggles lets you install a bookmark, essentially, a little bookmarklet, right, in your bookmark bar of your browser. And any website that you visit that allows uh, JavaScript to operate, you can click on that bookmark, and you'll get a little overlay over the page, allowing you to mouse over each part of the page, which will be color-coded. And then to click on it, open up a small box at the bottom of the screen, and to type in any changes you want to make to the web page. And it creates those changes on a locally stored version of the page. You're not actually like, hacking the New York Times or anything. You're creating a copy of a page for you know, fair use, satire, criticism, uh, education, wh whatever your purpose may be in the classroom or beyond. Uh, it creates a copy for you right there on your computer that you're free to change, uh, again, bit by bit, using what you know and what you're learning about the web. Um, given how you just said that, can I link to that page or not? Yes. So okay. both of this, uh, both Thimble and uh, Goggles, uh, WebMaker as well, but um, Thimble and Goggles both have uh, you. You can sign up for accounts with both of those tools, and then save your work, and you'll get a URL for it. Uh, and can I just back up on the WebMaker? So WebMaker is something that you can download on your mobile device. Yeah, I believe specifically it's uh, for Android at the moment. Okay. Um, it's something where it's almost like a tile-based content creator, so you might slide in a picture and then slide in like a text box, slide in the direction you want to slide. So it's almost like doing a quick storyboard on your phone that you can then publish and share on the web to other people with WebMaker on their devices as well. So is that you're looking at maybe doing that for things other than Android too, or is? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not exactly sure where development is on that. I know it is for for Android now. Okay. We can, so we can dig up a link for that as well. Given how we started here, <laughs> I mean, you, the tools are important, right? Um, and getting people familiar with, interested in, curious about, and practicing the tools are important. But your job is much bigger than that, right? I mean, so how do you see the relationship between the whole web literacy interest that you have and introducing people to tools? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so I think of the technology as a means for problem solving, but also self-expression and community expression, right? So even in the more maybe technically oriented lessons that I'll develop about a particular uh, skill, like a, a piece of HTML or a piece of the styling language called CSS, try to think of something that has some humor to it or an engagement factor or something that can be paired with a hands-on activity that helps make it clearer and more concrete for the user. But ultimately, I think what we're trying to model in the curriculum is that you can build things online that matter to you. You can start small. You can keep learning as far as you want to go. You can find a community ready, willing, and able to help you develop uh, as someone who, who codes for the web or as someone who creates content for the web. And the, the big idea is we want to make tools that make the entry points to that kind of self-expression and knowledge and agency on the web you know, lower and lower, so more and more people have access to the web and, and everything it can afford them, not just one or two services. Mm -hmm. So for me, that does entail, like, I do think understanding how things work when you're looking at something on the web helps with that. Like, even if you, like, I can't write <laughs> code that matches a lot of what I see, but conceptually, I think I understand what's going on. And it just kind of helps me as a, as a user to, and as a producer to figure out maybe what are the next questions I need to ask to learn more, 
that helps me as a consumer ask questions about things like privacy and security and you know how is this going to interact with other things on my machine. Um, that kind of knowledge base, uh, I think, just helps people increase and improve their own awarenesses of what they can do and maybe what other people are doing online and you know which services and, and communities they want to be a part of. So I, I don't, I'm going to maybe get a little trouble here by saying this, but that's okay. I left that workshop a little funky, a little almost depressed, <laughs> because I could see how the workshop was entry level, but I could see how much more there is to do. I mean, I, I, I wonder if you feel that way too. Like, you can imagine what's possible. Yet so much time is spent in just introducing this stuff to people. Well, I mean that's how I it starts. That, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean that that's I think just how it starts. Um, when I guess I'm impatient. To yeah, say. <laughs> <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. Um, okay. I think back to the last year I spent in the classroom when we we were working on a, a small project-based learning academy, and what we would tell the students is, you know. It's awesome that you're here, and we're going to do so much problem solving and learning together, and we're going to, you know, really work our tails off to have a community where everybody feels safe and included, but also like full of, you know, power and potential. But the point isn't like we're not trying to make sure everyone who comes through our program gets a job in technology. We just want everyone to be aware of like the technology that's in their future jobs, in their lives, in their education, uh, and to be able to feel like they can own and maybe troubleshoot some of the things they have, right? So mm -hmm. I, I, for some people, I don't, I don't think going past that first awareness, that first understanding, necessarily has to happen for everyone all the time. But I think that first awareness, that first understanding, if we can help people get interested in that, mentors, educators, learners, uh, activists, we just help people get interested in that and then help other people get interested in that. Um, I think the community exists to help people go as far as they are ready to go when they're ready to get there. Cool. So we're going to, so, uh, you know, um, without Jeremy here, you know, I, I imagine you're going to occupy our time anyhow. <laughs> <laughs> I have no problem. And, and see, seeing the links that you put in the... It looks like he can. But just to say, so um, but looking back at Hypothesis one second, if I, if I make a page in um, X-ray goggles, right, can I hypothesize that page? Can I annotate that page? Yeah. And so, in fact, the um, I line 21 of the pad, the letter annotation lesson that we're from with Hypothesis, um, if you go ahead and you sign up for an account and you complete your, your project and publish it, either on Thimble uh -huh. Or with the web X-ray goggles, it's going to give you, you know, it's going to give you a URL. A URL. You're going to go to a web page where your project lives, and then whatever you can do with like a web page, you can do with that page. So the, okay. the letter annotation lesson actually depends on, and we've tested this, um, being able to run hypothesis on a published letter to the next president from that Thimble project. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Yeah, it was you, pretty. It was pretty neat to, to find out that. Do you want to? Is it a well? Let's not start there. Let's start with the easier ones. <laughs> Does yeah, that make sense? Wherever, the simpler yeah. ones. Yes. Let's start up with the letter. My letter to the next president. And okay. Chris and and others interested in youth voices. When I saw this, my letter to the next president, I thought, wow, you know, we have all these guides on youth voices. Um, they could all be. Uh, you know, they could all be Thimble projects, right? And if you can put Thimble projects together, that, you know, at any rate, so there's a, a project there that, that I'm, I can imagine um, integrating some of the work we do on Youth Voices with, with some of this. So that's in the back of my mind always. Very cool. But, but let's, we'll focus in on next president kind of things. Is that okay, Chad? Sounds right. And you're going to try to share your screen, right? I think I have. So you have shared. Yes. Is, is it showing up? 
Great. It is. I just need to click on it so it stays on the video even okay. if we're talking. Yeah. Yep. And we can hear you. Excellent. It's perfect. Yep. Go ahead. All right. So show us what's here and how it works. Yep. So uh, I don't have a great shortened URL. So the best link I can give you for this one is over in line 17 of the pad. Um, this is the Letters to the Next President 2.0 Remix This Letter landing page. So it's just got a tagline, and then it pulls some copy from the Letters to the Next President 2.0 site. And as that campaign kind of picks up steam and intensifies going into the next school year, and we start to find the channels where students can uh, share or publish and share their letters, uh, we'll also include that information on this page. Uh, but then it lets you go right on to the letter with this uh, link at the bottom. So that takes me to another project in Thimble. And it's just a, it's a form letter addressed to the next president uh, with some prompts. We share a little bit about who you are, why you're writing, your hopes for the next four years, explain why those things matter to you, and maybe give some leadership advice. So these are, these are prompts, these are suggestions we came up with, but they could easily be swapped out um, by an educator, by a mentor, by someone running a club who'd like to do this activity with more maybe specific questions or questions that are more hyper-local, you know, relevant uh, locally or to the, to the youth participating in the class or the program. From here, uh, as with other Thimble projects, you can click on the green Remix button in the upper right-hand corner and that will take you inside Thimble so you can actually see the code editor. Just take a moment. Uh, and typically the larger the project, the more time it takes to load. Uh, inside the Thimble environment, you can see at the top, you have the title of the project. Uh, and it's always good to come here first. This says, my letter to the next president, parentheses, remix. So, if you want to rename this to something more particular for yourself or something that's easier to find or remember uh, in a classroom setting, something like that, you can go and, and change that there to whatever it is, or whatever naming convention that you adopt. You've got your account here, and you've got your gray publish button in the upper right-hand corner that you can click when you're all ready to go, and you'll get your own new URL, a new project that's separate from this one. Still remixable. Other people can then remix your work but this is where you publish and get your URL. Uh, if we go down into the editor itself, on the left is this files sidebar, and this is where the HTML web pages in a project live, the CSS style sheets that tell the pages how to look. Um, if you were to write a script for the page, like in JavaScript, something that made the page a little more interactive, it could live over here as well. You can put pictures here. Uh, you can also create folders now which is a relatively recent development. So you can really practice good file uh, and directory architecture and structure here. Um, so if you're helping students who maybe struggle with uh, organization, uh, this is a place where you can really do targeted mini lesson kind of work in that. The editor is a large gray area in the middle. There's a light theme and a dark theme. So you can see there I made my background light. Um, I like to work with the, with the dark themes, just a matter of personal preference. And you can uh, adjust the text size to make it more readable. I'll do that now. I'll bump it up a little bit. There we go. And this is the page itself. So it takes you through all the parts of a web page. All the code is right here. You've got the HTML at the top, letting the web browser know that this is indeed a web page. Uh, you have the head here at line three is where it begins, and that holds information about the page for browsers to use including the page's title. Um, there are some links to different lines here, like 11 and 12, that are calling in the fonts that you see. Uh, and a link at uh, line 14 that's calling in the rest of the style sheet that lets the page know there's that background image of the White House balcony uh, and the colors uh, and the positioning for the different things, like the box that holds the letter. And you could replace that, yes? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can actually just edit the style sheet itself and replace anything in it which is pretty great. Um, mm -hmm. Further down, uh, the head closes around line 15, the body starts, and the body of the page is where everything uh, that shows up on screen lives. So instead of title, it says H1 here for heading one. You can see when I highlight that tag at line 22, over here, I, uh, all the way to the right, I have a preview of what the page looks like, and the part of the page I'm working on has a subtle blue box around it to let me know 
where I am on the page. So I could say, I could change this to something like, dear next president, and see it updated in real time, and know that everything's working. So just, just a quick point. Um, whenever I use this and, and then kids publish their work on Youth Voices, right? Mm -hmm. um, and we, on a lot of pages, not every page, but certainly, on a lot of pages, it's, it's just a vanilla um, HTML. That the, uh, so there's no, right? So it's a blank page. Um, but the um, they don't control the style sheet, though, right? Right. So, so they just copy everything below the header? Mm-hmm. Um, they could, yeah. So in this case, they would lose that background image, right? That's, that's correct. Um, mm -hmm. But to kind of help with that or to see how it's done, uh, you can also, uh, over on the right, uh, where we have our preview of the live web page, mm -hmm. right above it, we do have a preview pane and a tutorial pane. Mm -hmm. So any project that has a file called tutorial.html and the file sidebar will come with kind of step-by-step -step instructions about what to change. And for this project, it's all about uh, changing the title, changing the text. It's mostly about copy. Uh, but there are other projects that deal more specifically with changing things like images, um, and you can see here also it's kind of it's mentioned partway through the tutorial as an option. Like if you wanted to change the image, here's a way you could do it. You could search Creative Commons, look for this line of the code. But you would be having out. to use the, the style sheet for that, right? Uh, that yeah. In this case, yeah. Okay. Um, yep. So if we went over to that style sheet, style.css, uh, here it is. But again, the tutorial is there to help you find exactly which lines you need to change, uh, whether it's on the web part, the web page part, the HTML part, or over on the style sheet, the CSS part. So uh, the, tut the tutorials are new to this version of Thimble, is that right? There, there was a tutorial feature built into the last version of Thimble that actually lived mm -hmm. on the left side, over on the other side of the page, uh, and it was... Uh, the CSS that structured it, uh, the, the, both the HTML and the CSS that structured it were a little bit different than this one, so it was kind of like going after the same idea, um, but that one broke down into kind of slides or panes or tiles that you would go through. You'd click on an arrow and go through each step. Uh, the tutorials now are much more vertical. Okay. You can see it's kind of like one long text. Yeah, because I'm noticing um, before, you know, all the clues were kind of in comments in the mm -hmm. code, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. that was another convention. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so... Um, this looks easier to use. <laughs> right. It does seem a lot more user-friendly, right? I think that was the idea, to get the code to be a little bit cleaner and to use the tutorial to point you to specific lines that would be relatively uncluttered by comments. Um, are, there, so, are there any other quick changes you can point to um, between the older version and this version? Um, you can. Like, you go to preview over here. Right above the live preview, you'll see this display icon, but there's also a mobile icon. So you can, like, preview how things might look mobile if you're developing and you want to make sure things are responsive. You can go to a full screen editing mode. Um, if you are signed in with your account, you can also mm -hmm. export your entire project. So even if you had a page with, let's say, 10 web pages, two style sheets, some JavaScript, five or six images, uh, you can now export that entire project. And then if you wanted to, just work on it locally on your machine in like a text editor. And then you could come back to your Thimble project later and just copy paste from your machine to your Thimble project. So what this means is you can export a copy of your project to work on offline or to put on computers if you're in like a a setting where you have devices but not a lot of Wi-Fi access, you could take something like a flash drive. You could export your project somewhere where you have access, put it on a flash drive, and then if you're going somewhere with devices that are unable to connect, you could put it kind of on each machine and uh, students learners could still work on it. Um, you could gather back their copies and then when you get back to a Wi-Fi zone. Yeah, okay. Export. <laughs> <laughs> I just think it's really great to, to be able to export and to work. No, no, I, that's all cool. I just, five times of doing that, you got to fight for Wi-Fi in the meantime, <laughs> if you can. Um, I do yeah. want to show over here on the left, one thing that we did um, for this particular project to encourage people to play around with it and to show some of the possibilities for 
customization that educators and learners can do. We put a couple alternate letter styles in there. So there's also this kind of darker version uh, featuring mm -hmm. a photo of the White House at night. There's a lightning bolt somewhere there in the background in the full screen version. <laughs> Uh, and then we have another one that is much more just like iconic. So it's a it's just a graphic of the White House in blue on a red background with white lettering. Now, do you where do you get those? Because like on mine, I'm logged in mm -hmm. to the same project, and I don't see the alternate uh, HTMLs. Is that the plus button there? No. Did you um, did you remix the welcoming page that has the information about the project, or did you remix the letter itself? Oh, I think I'm on the uh, letter itself. Oh, okay. Um, it should this should have popped up over there. Okay. Strange that it didn't. Um, maybe try the link in the pad, and from the link in the pad, make sure you click on that button at the bottom that takes you to the letter. Okay. Oh. Got it. Cool. And then the tutorial talks about how when you're finished, if you've picked one of the alternate letter styles, uh, you can essentially delete the other letters, uh, rename the letter that you want to keep as index.html, and it will still show up as the, the main page of your project when you publish it. Can I ask a question about, uh, and this is probably unpredictable, but... Um, like sometimes, I think before I've lost projects, mm -hmm. uh, or makes, I mean, mm -hmm. are we pretty stable these days? Yeah. Um, in fact, it's uh, I find it pretty easy now to find what I'm looking for. Just uh, once you've logged in, you can click on uh, your portrait and then where it says hi, your account name, and you can just go to your projects. Uh, and I've not I've not missed anything yet. Oh yeah, they're all there still. Okay. There, there is, you know, you know, you've worked with middle school students, um, <laughs> Chad. But th there is, there is. It's so easy to remix that my students end up with twelve versions of things and then can't find the one they were working on. But yeah. <laughs> that's, you know, that's yeah, a foul. That's a, that's something they have to figure out. <laughs> but and with our help. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so eventually, so I, I just had a conversation with Christina Cantrell um, about how youth voices right now, um, she and I both kind of see as a sandbox for kids to be publishing already right now, letters to the next president, ideas, thoughts, um, media. Um, as I suggested, they could, they wouldn't have... Yeah, so because because Youth Voices wipes when they post on their discussion posts, um, it wipes out all of the, anything that's below the, it wipes out the head, right? Yeah, if they're so just having the and text. pasting from the body, they're just going to get the content. Right. But the, but that's still useful, I think, in, in interesting ways. So with, with, certainly, certainly with some projects. I'm not sure this one, but... Right. Anyway, well, it's so, like a mentor text within a mentor text, right? You might be approaching it as the entire web page, or you might be approaching it as the piece that's displayed in the browser window. They could also like put the text up and then publish, and then link to the you know go see it on. Oh, for sure. Yeah, they could do it both ways too. Mm -hmm. Lots of lots of possibilities. But how do you imagine? But event when I think it's around the convention the conventions or the summer sometime mm -hmm. um, that the letters to the next president will go live and maybe KQED might have something as well. What? How do you imagine the stuff getting published there? Yeah, so I think we'll see what the campaign suggests and offers as kind of channels for those publications uh, and then just go back into the tutorials and make a note of, you know, what's possible. Uh, you know, after you publish this project, come back in, uh, do what you're suggesting right, grab the letter text from the body and submit it to this Google form here. Or, you know, really kind of like making it clear that 
there are multiple ways to publish here, to, to be heard, but also to participate directly in the project. You can grab what you've done here already, uh, take the pieces of it that fit into the kind of quote unquote right, official container for uh, sharing the work and just bring it on over there. Mm -hmm. Can, can I show um, and we talk about um, an, an example that we have of a guide that's similar to these? Yeah. Um, maybe I can. All right. I'll stop screen sharing. <laughs> yeah. Well, and Chris, keep talking uh, here for a second. Yeah, was, um, <clears throat> so I guess I was typing something in the chat room, so. Yeah, just speak it, man. <laughs> Uh, well, the, um, um, is there a question there? No, Peggy in the chat room was just saying she liked the offline uh, aspect of Thimble, and I was just agreeing that um, the place I teach in the summer, uh, I teach adults, but they're uh, away from, like they're staying in um, dorms, and so the you know the Wi-Fi is sometimes an issue with lots of people. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I think right. that that seems practical for what we're doing there. Cool. So, um, is it on? Is my yes. screen showing? You are. You are screen sharing successfully. Okay. So this is not the most complex. It, it looks like it is, but there is a simpler one and a harder one, All right? So three different versions of this. Um, uh, I, gosh, what's his name? The. So this is based on. Uh, I'll think of his name before the end of the show. Anyway, um, being able to give students. Um, Real sort of rhetorical content mm -hmm. um, as the as they're writing, if I could say it like that. Yeah. So, right. So this guy. So so it suggests actual language that people can put in, but it's more than that, right? Um, the there's a place to pose your question, right? Yeah. Um, this is basically, and then you know, to rephrase it, you can see there's a suggestion that there are references you want to. It's a research project that you're doing, um, but what else? Well, I mean, I like it from a rhetorical standpoint. It looks like you've got like um, you're trying to look at it from different perspectives and helping. There's that too, right? So there's it starts with your issue, then it says, okay, so this is what one candidate says, and this is what I think. This is what another candidate says. This is what I think. You know, I mean, obviously, if you kind of look at it, the kid would say, oh, I, I get it, and and hopefully they'd be able to, to run with it. Not everybody, but some, but a lot of kids would be able to to kind of move from the sort of straitjacket to. <laughs> to a, a more f fluid mm -hmm. piece of writing. Um, so I guess I mean I guess it's pretty simple to consider this similar to what you have produced there, but yours is much cleaner, simpler, doesn't try to do as much in some way, right? Um, yeah, I think that's uh, I think that's correct. Um, but could this be, I mean, we could easily make this into a thimble, though, right? Right, or if you wanted to take the template for, like, a, a letter to the next president and make it into the, like, this much more detailed uh, rhetorical right. persuasive piece of the next mayor, you could copy and paste this copy, right, into the body of the page, hit publish, and then you now have your own version of the letters to the next mayor project to use with your students. Mm -hmm. But I, I mean, I think I have an answer to this, but I just want to hear what you think. What's what's the argument for using Thimble as opposed to just, um, you know, copying this into a Word document and and doing your writing? Gotcha. Um, so I think the, the answer is answer. My answer would be it's not just about Thimble, but it's also about platforms like youthvoices.net, right? Uh, the, the important part here is helping students understand they can have a voice online uh, and that they can use that voice online to enter into uh, civic discourse and civic engagement and participation. Um, and that the web is great for that. 
and they can use that throughout their lives to kind of be heard on the things that matter to them. And knowing that they can do that with youthvoices.net, uh, that they can, with you know maybe more effort, right, uh, secure their own domain, publish their own work, start their own blog. They could do it on WordPress. They could do it with Thimble. Like knowing there are platforms out there, and that each is flavored a little bit differently, but that they all support uh, creative, political, economic self-expression. I think that's the key piece. But but also Thimble teaches web literacy, right? Whereas right. So so it does have. So it goes beyond course. just the writing. But yeah, go. Well, it, I think so. If you want to use it that way. So if you were specifically trying to do, let's say, um, a unit or module on being heard on the web, or how to you know how to build a web page from scratch to be heard on the web, I, I, whatever the goal is that's related to web literacy there, you could use a project like this to help students practice putting relevant content into that learning, right? We're making a, we're making this web page not just to make a web page, but because we want to express this. We want to be able to figure out a couple different ways to make sure we're heard when we want to say this online. And the, the Thimble piece can help with that in making what's going on kind of under the screen, so to speak, or behind the browser window in the code, uh, in the HTML, the CSS, and sometimes the scripting languages, it can make that clear and accessible and manipulable. Because here's another example. One time um, I was using the web uh, or the meme maker uh, mm -hmm. and, you know, with the group. And um, so it's like, okay, let's get started and let's do that. And somebody's like, I'm done. So what he had done is gone to like, you know, whatever, mememaker.com and just cranked it out. And so I think everybody in the group understood once there was some, there was excitement about like someone figured out, you know, like how do you change the background color? And then like, you know, one person figured it out and shared it with others. Like that seemed to be a lot more fun <laughs> than like the guy who just went and did it and was done. Yeah, the kinds of, peer-to-peer -peer learning that pop up when you're problem solving anything relatively novel like this I think is fantastic, right? Um, and certainly part of the culture of learning how to do this is taking advantage of peers whether they're near or far and their expertise. So it might be the person sitting next to you, might be somebody on Stack Overflow, might be an article on the Mozilla Developer Network or W3 schools, but that's definitely part of the culture. Like getting excited about seeing something happen wondering what else you can do, and then messing around enough to find the language to ask the right question and move ahead. Yeah. I, think, I think that's just powerful learning in general, right? And we might want to do that politically, we might want to do that technically, and on platforms like this and Youth Voices, we have a chance to do both together. So there isn't in the letter, I mean, you're going to show us other things too, and we should move on maybe, but in, in the letter that you showed us, there isn't that much um, coding there to learn, or right. is there? I mean, um, was that consciously done? Yeah, we don't, like, we don't want, we want this to be something people feel they can use, uh, that students can successfully customize, that educators can successfully customize. So, you know, part of web literacy is figuring out how to change the content on the page. So let's say you don't want to mess with the background image at all, uh, but you do want to, like, so if I have something to say, how does that look on a web page? That's a great place to start. Um, and because it's part of this campaign, you know, we want to take advantage of what Thimble can do well, which is to show very clearly in this case how you can change the contents of this letter to make it say what you want to say uh, as a, uh, you know, developing citizen or, or, or fully-fledged citizen. Um, that's the focus here. So I know I said we want to move to the other ones, but I, can you bring it back up and show yeah. us something? I, I just want to see how Thimble works. I mean, maybe, I think I know already, but I want to show and see. Like if, if on that very, in that very simple text, mm -hmm. if I wanted to add an image, mm -hmm. can you show us how to do that? Or maybe yeah. I don't have like so, um, and, no, and, and or a link, right? I mean, those are kind of the first, two things I want to show kids how to use HTML to do? I guess I would, uh, not to throw too much, but I mean, I guess I would add, like, if it's possible to embed a video. You know? Yeah, that's fine. 
-hmm. Yeah, all, all of that's possible, right? So I'll go to, let's just do it as a simple use case. Um, right underneath Dear Next President in the text. So Dear Next President is at line 40. I'll hit return a few times. I'll li I'm going to wind up at line 42. Um, let's say we wanted to put a video. Chad, line. I know you like the dark, but for our video, can you make it light? <laughs> does, does, it, does it show up then? I, mm, maybe not. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes the yeah, dark leave, is surprisingly. Leave it dark. Yeah, okay. All right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I can still make it a little bit bigger and maybe... No, it's okay. It's thing. fine. Okay. Yeah. Um, so if I wanted to put in a link, I could, I could do something like, um, I hope you visit... Oh, well, that's a little sloppy. I'll put in my paragraph tags, and you can see that Thimble likes to autocomplete tags for you. So if you're a novice user, uh, it'll help you kind of automatically remember to put your closing tags in. So when I did my opening P tag for paragraph, the closing tag, slash P was generated, and my cursor was kicked to a line in between them. I can say, like, um, I hope... Did we lose... Oh, you, you muted. What did I mute? Oh, thank you. I mean, can you hear me? No, yeah, yeah, you're good now. Yeah, okay. okay. So just at line 43, I'm saying, I hope you'll visit my hometown, comma, and then I'll name it, but I'll put a link there. And so I'll do A... And you can see Thimble also will pop up suggested tags. So it's mm -hmm. trying to figure out on the fly kind of like what you might be doing and then to help you do that. So we'll say A, the next part of a link tag is href, the hypertext reference. I'll say something, and, and that takes a value in quotes. So I'll say something like uh, HTTP colon slash slash hometown dot Right? I mean, that's a fake web. That, hopefully it doesn't go anywhere. <laughs> um, somebody, somebody give me a better one in the, in the thing. I'll use it. My hometown, and we'll just call it, right, hometown USA a for, for now. If you were to adapt this for a local election in another country, of course, change away, right? So I hope you'll visit my hometown. And you can see now over in the preview pane, that paragraph appears, and Hometown USA has the characteristic underlining of a link. And if I clicked on it, and hometown.my was actually a web page, it would take us there. So it doesn't have any problem handling the things that you want to put into your web page. Um, it, it rocks that. Um, image would be the same way, right? Uh, an image tag is just IMG. I'm sorry, go ahead, Paul. No, I, I just want to say that um, how... how superior as a learning tool. And this may be totally obvious, and you do it so often. You, you, I don't know, but how, how superior as a learning tool that process is, as opposed to, like, trying to get it right from the board or copying it from, you know, the, the web somewhere, like, here's how you make a link. You know? right. Yeah, I, I, doing, like, really targeted mini-lessons and think-alouds and talk-alouds, I think, is a great way to begin teaching any technology, um, but I think those pathways online also work for a number of learners who kind of grok the basics and are like, where can I go to just like challenge myself to find the answers? So when I introduce something like this, so when I introduced it in the classroom, the I always tried to make it clear there was an understanding that um, I was going to demo things kind of in a step-by-step think-aloud way for everybody, and for the folks who felt like they got it and they wanted to explore, go explore. Just like, you know, do, don't disrupt the person next to you who might be listening and, like, depending on the mini lesson. And then after the mini lesson, I'd repeat the mini lesson for people who were struggling. Well, the people who got the mini lesson the first time would then also join in the play. So there's, like, this recursive exit ramp to um, your own pacing and your own kind of micro inquiries after each mini lesson. Uh, if you were ready for them, and if not, there was continued support for learning the basics. What if I had typed something wrong? Like, um, so, that? yeah, well, I can show you actually right now. Do you see okay, how my yeah. image tag at line 46 mm -hmm. is not complete yet? Mm -hmm. And so it throws a big pink warning flag right here. So whenever you have something that's maybe um, mistyped or incomplete, it'll throw that flag. Mm -hmm. Um, sometimes you might throw in a tag like you might be trying to do the piece of paragraph tag, uh, but you might, um, 
type it as like type it as like by action, action, action or something. Thimble might get really might get really excited. And then okay. try to and close it with slash P. P. And you might not know there's a mistake there. there. So it's it's so always, always good to have maybe like a critical friend or a, a mentor take a look at code that's not quite working if you can't see why. Mm -hmm. But Thimble does try to warn you. Okay. So back to line uh, 46 now. The yeah. image tag, uh, you'll see it, it's not automatically closed yet. The image tag stands alone in HTML. That's one of the singleton tags. And instead of taking an href, it takes an src attribute for source. So I could say source equals... Um, Take yourself. <laughs> and, yeah, right? You can, actually. I'll go up to the plus. I'll click on upload. I'll choose take a selfie. Okay. I don't know which picture it's coming from. So I'm going to use the cat. Oh, I can't yet. Picture, which picture? Oh, because I'm screen sharing. <laughs> well, let me do the oh, selfie. Okay. Uh, but I'll just take click. I'll select that selfie. Uh, it now goes into my sidebar as selfie1.png. And if I go back to index, I can type quotation marks. Selfie1 will pop up there. Close it. And there it is. <laughs> Right. It's yeah. also good practice, though, to put an alt tag in for screen readers for accessibility. So you can put an alt tag in that stands for alternative text. And the web browser, if it's doing, if it's a screen reader and it's verbalizing what's on the page, vocalizing it, you can just say something like, an image of a blank screen taken by accident. And then uh, in cases where uh, someone is using a screen reader, uh, you know, the computer will read that line to them. Cool. So you put it. alt tags on everything now, I would imagine. Uh, yeah, we try to. We try to make sure that we are alt tagging the things we're using and using descriptive alt tags uh, rather than just, like, the name of the file. Uh, so it's kind of clear what's going on there, uh, either through screen reading. All right. I'm, I'm enjoying the slowness of this, but... <laughs> i got to show the video embed real quick, though. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's what I was right. going to rush you to. Yep. All right, so let me go and grab a quick video embed from our episode yesterday. So, and, and as you're doing it, I, I just want to say that as, as I, what I try to do is I try to integrate this kind of learning all the time, right? Yeah. So when they, when they make a profile on Youth Voices, they record their profile and download it as an mp3 and then learn how to embed that mp3 on their profile, right, mm -hmm. uh, using HTML tag. So, like, day one, they're, they're doing that. Um, but I have students who, when I when I show, sit down beside them and show that to them, they're looking at me like, this is a language I, I'm never going to use. I, I can't... They don't even see it. They don't even know what's going on, right? So I'm just... So I, I, I don't know. So I feel like this would allow them to see it better. Mm -hmm. We um, One of the things that we have up right now but that we're also uh, testing in our kind of quest to figure out what's relevant and, and what works in the curriculum that we offer uh, is the project playlist activity that I think is in the Weblet Basics 2 teaching kit. Um, and you can find that off of teach.mozilla.org slash activities. Um, that ask students to create like a playlist for themselves that they might use while they're working in class using SoundCloud files. But mm -hmm. there's also a portion in there where you can kind of go slow as an educator or mentor and really look at the SoundCloud embeds. Because if you look at it all together, it seems kind of like a scrambled mishmash. But if you look for the words that you can recognize, you begin to see where like the comments are turned on and off, for example. And so we talk about you can actually go into the embed code and change the comments on a SoundCloud file you might be embedding from true to false, so that if you have a song you really like, but the comments are full of people like dropping F-bombs, uh, you can display it on a page you made for class with none of those comments on it and still have it just kind of like playing in your headphones while you work or whatever. So we, it, it's always a process of like trying to find those use cases that might provide some relevance, whether it's through something very like near and dear and personally meaningful in, in a serious way or a playful way or an entertainment way to help learners understand how things are working uh, in ways they might 
um, for lack of a better term, like you know, like like use. I, it's a, it's always weird to try to figure out where to start. But project you, playlist is one thing we're, we've been trying for audio embeds. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Does that make sense? It does. Mm -hmm. I um, I have other issues with uh, distracted attention. Yeah. <laughs> um, I you know. I, reading is hard enough. Doing it while you're listening to your favorite song is even harder. Oh uh, yeah, um, this is more for like <laughs> I'm just saying. A coding workshoppy environment. This is yeah, not yeah. a uh, yeah. Yeah. Computer. Um, it, green green is obviously the tags. Is that what they're called? Mm -hmm. um, pink the pink H, the SRC and the H ref are what? Those are those are like attributes, and the blue attributes. is like the values. The values. Okay. Um, yeah, that's pretty. That's pretty simple. Okay, you're embedding audio yeah. or video. So I just ran over the audio, to, right? I'm yeah, right. it depends on the service that you're using, the platform. So I just ran over to our Mozilla curriculum workshop uh, mm -hmm. landing page, and grabbed the embed code from the YouTube video that was made after last night's re recording. So that's something where you can go to YouTube to any video. Underneath it, click on the share tag. And then you have a choice about like getting the link for the page or getting the embed code for the video. So I got the embed code, and I'm just going to cut and paste it. And uh, there it is. Right. So if you're using a service that gives you an embed code, you can copy and paste it into Thimble, and it'll work. Which they're pretty cool at doing. But then I want to stop and say, okay, now let's look at that code. What do you, you know, how... Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Chris, do you do you do that with students? Do you think that's worth doing? I mean, uh, I think it's it's more like when kids stumble upon it and explain it to each other is where it seems to work. Um, yeah, I, I can't say that I break down code too much uh, in the mm -hmm. class. Um, yeah, like Chad just did walking through code. Um, yeah, it's not something I do for like every embed, right? But introducing something, or like trying to very often, uh, regardless of age, right? When we begin learning code, it's kind of like that fixed mindset: like, will I ever get this? What is this? This seems so difficult. Like, uh, I, I was totally uh, kind of mired in that mindset uh, for a long, long time uh, because I thought this is a story I tell all the time. But until my mid thirties, I was like. I could never do any of this because I didn't take the college course that had the textbook that listed all the things you could use, right, in code. Like, I, was, I didn't understand people made this stuff. Um, but, like, here, you, you know, it's easy to talk about width and height, and then one thing uh, that's sometimes profitable to do in terms of, like, learning outcomes is to invite students to break the page. So, like, what happens if you make the width 5,600 or the height, like, 31.5? Uh, you can see, like, the video just doesn't even display correctly. So you can have some fun, like, breaking the page and then trying to walk backwards to something that works. So you can create kind of um, these micro problems, these micro puzzles on the fly that students actually create themselves. Just invite them to type in a ridiculous number there and then to work backwards until they have something that might work again for the page. But, I mean, in general, I would say I think it's valuable when anybody unpacks their thinking while they're working with a tool, you know, whether that's digital or in a wood shop, you know. Um, I always admire teachers who, who do that. You know, it's like I'm using this tool, I'm thinking about it, I'm talking about how I use this thing and why I'm doing what I'm doing. Yeah, absolutely. So those, yeah, but, and I... I I know I'm repeating myself, but I, I really think that as English teachers, it's not a big deal. It's no harder, especially with this tool, to kind of say, okay, you know what? You need a comma before that phrase, <laughs> you know, as opposed to, see that video? Let's look at how you put that in there, you know? Let's, let's, mm -hmm. let's, let's and, and I think that quick in and out, um, and, you know, we're not doing a whole coding class. Right, we're just learning what's what's on our web pages, right? Um, yeah. I think that that I think that's a really effective kind of attitude to have, um, and th this tool allows for that. I think. I'm nodding okay. behind my screen share. Okay. <laughs> do you want to do you want to show uh, fa yeah. obviously faster? 
Um, the other the other things you guys maybe, maybe I'll just run through them and then uh, yeah, yeah let's do them. Things. All right. So this is the uh, this is just a simple candidate meme maker, right? Throw a picture in, uh, something kind of funny about the election. Uh, update the credits to give yourself credit. Uh, and the tutorial for something like this would help you change the text uh, and also kind of encourage you to use something like maybe Creative Commons search to find a background image and swap it out. Uh, this is a quote project, so again, same same idea. Uh, but instead of making a meme, you might you might be juxtaposing like a background image with a quote that a candidate actually said to uh, provide some commentary right between the comparison. So uh, you can see there's space for meow from candidate kidding, and then there's a background image that you can swap out to be whichever candidate you want it to be. So I'm using cats and dogs a lot too, you know, uh -huh. so people can put in whatever they want. Can can you hit remix quickly? I just want to see what the code yeah. looks like. Yeah, absolutely. Just take a second to load here. All right, so the page itself is uh, you got a header naming the page. You got a couple of web fonts coming in. Uh, the body has the candidate quote project text in that box. It's got the quote itself. It's got the license at the bottom of the page, and that's about it. Uh, the background image, I believe, is brought in by the style sheet. Yep, there it is at line four of the style sheet. And the uh, we can access the tutorial in the tutorial pane to go through those things. Uh -huh. And if I publish, I can embed this? So if you publish this, you'll get the whole page. Right, get, and I, I can embed that page, or not? Is there an embed code? You'll get a you'll get a you'll get a URL. You'll get a link to it, so you I can link to it. To learn how to. Um, if you want to yeah. set up like an iframe, you could do that. You could uh -huh. screen capture or snippet, snippet uh -huh. it and create an image of it, uh -huh. put it somewhere else, and then link the image back to the URL. That's okay. That will work as well. Yeah, keep going. Sorry. Sure. There's a just a very simple campaign poster. Again, these are this, this is actually kind of. Um, meant to be maybe like a subtle mini in it by the time you're done, so that if you were to go through these activities, uh, you would maybe feel confident at the end swapping out images and text on a web page, which is a great way to begin. Uh, so this one just has you like, you know, you would go in, you might swap the background image, you might not, change the name of the candidate at the top, change the motto at the bottom, boom. You could print it out, you can make a gallery of these for the classroom. Uh, you could have like a link around, and kids could send each other their links to check out each other's posters. Uh, however, you wanted to use it when you're finished, you could use it. But again, this takes you through swapping out the background image, changing the text, and kind of using those two uh, very apparent features on the page to say what it is you want to say. The uh, next piece here is uh, lesson plan. So this is in our curriculum template. And this was developed with Jeremy Dean from Hypothesis. Uh, and this is probably useful to people who are even just thinking about doing the letter uh, and or the annotation. Uh, but it will take you through getting ready to do the letter to the next president project in Thimble. It will orient you to Hypothesis. And then it provides steps that you can take. Uh, Hands-on activity at first, like a sticker voting activity, uh, how to write the letters in Thimble and then how students can share their letters with one another and then use Hypothesis to comment on one another's work online and to annotate one another's letters back and forth. And just and cool. finally yeah. some suggested uh, reflection prompts you might use uh, as a, as a self-assessment piece. And these prompts, these instructions, this curriculum is totally remixable too. Correct. Correct. Yep. This one is delivered in Thimble, so uh, you can change this. You could go in and kind of empty all its content and just use this as a curriculum template for other things as well. Absolutely. Nice. Hmm. And then uh, we have one minute. Um, yeah, yeah. So I wanted to show this. This is uh, our most popular okay. thing of a bobber. This is the homework excuse generator, Paul, or homework excuse machine. And Paul had asked before we start today, like. Is this something you could use to maybe swap out homework excuses and to put in instead 
maybe campaign slogans or quotes from candidates, well, right? Sh sh I'll show it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, okay. so if you click the button, this version, um, what's happening uh, on the page itself is that when you click the button, the page is pulling different possible words from a couple of different pools and then combining them in order on the page. From so two, like, from two different pools, is it? Or three, three different pools. Yep. Oh, okay. There's somebody like my crew doing something like destroyed, and then an object like my lab report. So my crew destroyed me. I say the, the arrays here, the pools are very limited, so that when a new user goes in and sees those pools, it feels manageable. There aren't thousands of possibilities here, um, just a few at a time. Um, but that means there you, you can delete two or three words per pool and then add in as many as you want to really make this your own. So we haven't kind of reskinned this for the Letters to the Next President campaign yet, but I think it would be a lot of fun to do so. Um, it would also be great for Paul to do so, because we'd love to point to it as a community contribution. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm thinking I want to do that. So yeah, I'm, what I'm imagining is like, you know, Hillary Clinton's picture in the background, and then what comes up first are her qualities, then come up her promises, then her policies somehow. You know, I, I don't, I'd have to work out the, yeah. the grammar of it. But yeah. So, yeah, like those could be the pools, absolutely. Yeah, that would be interesting. That would be fun um, and interactive. Well, lots of possibilities, Chad. Thank you for slowing down. <laughs> Where, that was a lot of fun. Cool. I hope Chris, it made sense. I, are you kidding? I think it makes a lot of sense. And, yep. and um, yeah, helps me feel less funk. I, I just, I, it's like, I don't know. I think this stuff is so exciting and so possible and not that hard that, I mean, it was wonderful to, the, the other teachers who were at that New York workshop, was it was wonderful to listen to them, but I was just like, how much of this are they actually going to do? Oh, my God. <laughs> anyway. We'll keep so, rallying that community on our, on our discourse thread. It's been cool to see the projects that have been uh, highlighted there so far. Yeah. So, Chris, do you have any last thoughts? Well, I mean, Chad, you mentioned community a few times, so, like, I'm, I'm guessing you could uh, mention some places like this monthly uh, webinar you're talking about, and then also I, I thought you mentioned, like, communities. Yeah, absolutely. So there's kind of the longstanding, and this is from maybe the last iteration of uh, Thimble and Popcorn, right? There's the hashtag teach the web community which is made up of, you know, Mazillions and people interested in teaching the web from around the world. Uh, you can get in touch with, and I'll put this in the chat because it's easier right now than the pad, um, at MozTeach on Twitter. Uh, it's kind of the learning team handle right now. Uh, it's great to interact there. Uh, we do have, if you go to teach.mozilla.org, you can sign up for our newsletter. And right now we are kind of rebooting and relaunching several community engagement Opportunity. So one of which is our monthly uh, curriculum workshop. That's a that's a webcast, and you can find that linked at line 27 of the of the pad. Uh, there's also a tweet chat each month. Uh, the community call is coming back, uh, and then there are these other kind of hubs of activities where if you're an educator who's maybe doing a lot of this work in the classroom or thinking of starting a club, you could join the clubs community and get a lot of support there. There's just a ton a ton of great content creation going on there right now, guides for club mentors in different settings, uh, ways to get started, ways to sustain your club, just a lot of really um, stellar community-driven work coming out of that. Um, and then, you know, as you find your way ways into those communities and you ask your questions and you discover kind of your own areas of inquiry, um, like Thimble, I think the Mozilla community and indeed kind of the open web movement, right, the, the broader movement of which uh, we aspire to be to be a, a part, right, is uh, is there. And so if you want to become more specialized in something or if you get really interested in something and you want to take a deep dive into it, um, I know that people are out there who can help mentor those experiences or broker them and point you in the right direction to learn more. Uh, but starting with Moz Teach, Teach the Web, and maybe going to teach.mozilla.org to check out the newsletter, those are the most direct ways, I think, right now to find out what's happening and get involved. Well, as Terry Elliott said a couple of weeks ago, Mozilla is very lucky to have you. 
you're lucky it's to be a, there, but uh, I know, I know. It's all, it's all good. Anyway, yeah. and so th we we're lucky that you joined us tonight, um, and we'll we'll pick up Jeremy soon, um, and we'll continue having these conversations. Thank you so much. Um, we meet here every Wednesday night. Want to say, um, and uh, we are part of the World Bridges Network that Jeff Lebo and Dave Cormier set up. Um, thank you so much, Jeff. Thanks for having me. It was fun, and uh, okay. I like to slow down and think aloud. So, uh, yeah. Anytime we can do it, let me know. <laughs> thank Thanks you. Uh, thank you, Chris. Good night. Good night. Good night. See you, Jeff.